This video is about indeterminate forms and L'Hopital's rule. So L'Hopital's rule is a tool for evaluating a certain kind of hard limit. Um, and it only applies in limits that are of so-called indeterminate form. So the two possible indeterminate forms are infinity over infinity and zero over zero. So I have an example of each type here. So as x goes to infinity, e to the x gets bigger and bigger, so it goes to infinity, and also obviously x goes to infinity as x goes to infinity. So you have infinity over infinity. So this is a case where you can use L'Hopital's rule, and you know L'Hopital's rule basically says that you can replace each function here with its derivative. So you can replace both the numerator with its derivative and the denominator with its derivative, and the limit will stay the same. So this is a use of L'Hopital's rule. And now you just have, you can ignore this one. So what happens to e to the x as x goes to infinity? It's infinity. Now we have uh, an indeterminate form, uh, an indeterminate limit of the form 0 over 0. So what happens is x goes to 0 of sine, it goes to 0, and obviously x goes to 0 as x goes to 0. So this is another situation where you can apply uh, L'Hopital's rule, and this becomes the limit as x goes to 0 of cosine x over 1, and now you can just plug in cosine 0 is, is 1, so 1 over 1 is 1. Um, so be careful not to get psyched out. Just because you see a quotient doesn't mean that you can use L'Hopital's rule. So, for instance, this one, you have natural log and on top and x on the bottom, and you're letting x go to 0 from the positive side, which you have to just because the domain of natural log is only positive numbers. And what's happening is natural log, you should look at a, a graph of natural log. Um, so what is a graph? Uh, let's just change this to... I wonder if it's going to yell at us, because natural log is not defined at zero, so this might look kind of weird. Yeah, it doesn't like it. Uh, but you can see, anyway, that natural log as x approaches zero goes down to minus infinity. So what this is really sort of minus infinity over zero. That's what happens. And minus infinity over zero is, is not indeterminate. It's actually easier than a limit for which you would have to use L'Hopital's rule. So how many zeros do you need to, to add together to make infinity? That's what division is asking here. And you need infinitely many of them. So this is, this is just negative infinity. So that's the, that's the limit. And uh, similarly, Here's another quotient, and it's not indeterminate. So you can see that in this case, x is going to infinity, and the numerator is going to 0. And the denominator is going to infinity. So this is it. This is the limit of the form 0 over infinity. Again, this is an easier situation than a situation in which you would need to use L'Hopital's rule, because it's just clear that, um, for one thing, 0 over anything is 0. But how much more? <laughs> How much more so when the thing in the denominator is infinity? So 0 over infinity is just 0. OK. So now let's do some actual problems. So I just kind of pick these out of the, the book at random. I think the, the problems in the L'Hopital section are, are kind of weirdly challenging. Um, oh, I'm sorry. I can't believe I just blew my nose on, on this video that I'm probably going to be watching when I'm 80. Um, yeah, so the reason they have to make the derivatives kind of hard is that L'Hopital's rule is just so easy. Like, it's just not challenging otherwise. So first, let's make sure that this really is indeterminate. So x goes to 0. On the bottom, you've got 0. And on top, you get 1 minus 1 is 0. So it is indeterminate. Now let's take the derivative of the top and the bottom. So on the top, you get minus sine mx times m, and uh, here you get minus minus becomes a plus, sine nx times n, and if you, if you say where did these come from, 
I think I'm just going to, I'm going to slam my face into the wall and break out all my teeth because it's the chain rule. And if you don't know the chain rule, stop studying L'Hopital's rule immediately because you don't know how to take the derivative, which is the most important thing. Study the chain rule. Now, what happens to the bottom when you take the derivative? You get 2x, okay. And can we plug in yet? So what happens if we plug in here? We get both of these on top are 0, and the bottom is also 0. Um, so actually, it's still indeterminate. So that means we need to use L'Hopital's rule again. Okay, so up here you get minus cosine mx m squared plus cosine nx times n squared. And down here you just get 2. Okay, and now let's check what's happening. So it's definitely not indeterminate anymore because the bottom is not 0 or infinity, it's 2. And you can just plug in you know, cosine of 0 is 1, so this is minus m squared uh, plus n squared. So that's kind of neat. It, it turns out to be n squared minus m squared. So that's a pretty problem. And now let's go on to do the next one. So x over arctan uh, 4x. So you probably remember that the derivative of just regular arctan which I guess I should write using the same notation, is this is going to be 1 over 1 plus 4x squared uh, times the derivative of the inside is 4. Okay, so that's going to be that, right? Um, so now let's do it. So is it indeterminate? So arctan of 0 actually is 0. And so x, when x is 0, x is 0. So this is indeterminate of the form 0 over 0. And you, let's use L'Hopital's rule on it. We need to check the limit as x goes to 0 of 1 over 1 over, oh wait, it's 4 over. I need to just plug this in. 4 over 1 plus 4x squared, OK, which is uh, 1 plus 4x squared over 4, and um, I forgot to write the limit. I'm just writing just like a baby. Sorry that my handwriting is so bad. Um, so this is what we've got, and what is that? Well, now there's no reason not to plug in, so it's just 1 fourth. And that's it. So that's as bad as it gets. I mean, I'll probably ask you something easier than that on the exam. So that's L'Hopital's rule for you.